I am Dr. Sanjeev Gulati, Director, Nephrology and Kidney Transplant, Fortis Group of Hospitals, NCR. Today, I will be sharing my thoughts with you on oral diabetics and chronic kidney disease. So, over the last two decades, diabetes has emerged as one of the commonest causes of chronic kidney disease. We were among the first to highlight this in our study, which was published in Renal Failure in 1999, when I was working as a faculty at Sanjay Gandhi PGI. We showed that in patients more than 40 years, at that point of time, diabetes was already the commonest cause of mid-stage kidney disease. And in patients under 40 years, it was the second commonest cause. Subsequently, our st studies were evaluated uh, validated by other centers like PGI Chandigarh, All Indian Institute of Medical Sciences, and Dr. Mani's group from Apollo Chennai. Now, diabetic kidney disease is to a large extent a preventable kidney disease, which means that if you have good glycemic control, you can essentially prevent diabetic microvascular complications. And there are several trials, the landmark diabetes control and complications trial, the UK PDS study that showed that if you are able to achieve good glycemic control, you can largely prevent diabetic kidney disease. So therefore, when you have a patient in your clinic, it is very important to impress upon him the need for me meeting the HPA1C targets, the need for achieving optimum glycemic control. Now, for this, we have a plethora of drugs in the market. And obviously, metformin is continues to be you know, one of the sheet anchors of therapy, and especially in type 2 diabetes, obese patients, there's no denying that metformin is a very good drug. The second group of drugs which I'd like to talk today is sulfonylureas. Now, obviously, over the last few years, there are a number of other drugs that have come, but I think there has been extensive trials with sulfonylureas and they retain their place even today in the management of diabetic kidney disease. Um, they, it is like a life boy soap, you know, it is cheap, it is best, it's easily available, well tolerated, and it gives you proven results. At the end of the day, you have got to get the blood sugar under control. And the best and the cheapest way to do it is still the sulfonylureas. Now, when we talk about kidney disease, we have, today we are no longer satisfied with the serum creatinine. We talk to our patients, we assess our patients in terms of an EGFR, the estimated glomerular filtration rate. And this is very easy to calculate. There are calculators which are available for free and you can download it on your cell phone or laptop and your paramedic can calculate the number while your patient is waiting in the clinic. So that when the patient comes to you, you exactly know what is this EGFR because this is going to decide what type of sulfonylurea you are using, what dose you are going to use. So just to quickly recapitulate, kidney disease is in five stages. Stage one is more than 90 EGFR, but there is microalbuminuria. Stage two is between 60 to 90. Yes, and there will be microalbuminuria there. Stage three is divided into stage 3A, which is 45 to 60, stage 3B, 30 to 45, stage 4 is 30 to 15, and stage 5 is less than 15. Now, each one of this is further subdivided into G1, G2, and G3. G1, um, G, G1 is, uh, sorry, A1, A2, and A3, depending on the severity of microalbuminuria. less than 30, 30 to 100, 100 to 300. So greater the microalbuminuria, lower the GFR, the more likely the patient is going to progress faster. Now, if you are dealing with a patient of stage one, stage two chronic kidney disease, you can continue to use any of these glimepirides and, um, and sulfonylureas. Glimepiride is certainly one of the commonest, uh, which has been there. It is one of the most efficacious. Uh, it's well tolerated. It's got minimal side effects. But the moment you have a patient whose EGFR is less than 60, then it is wise to shift to shorter acting uh, sulfonylureas because of the risk of hypoglycemia. 
Um, we all know that a lot of these drugs are renally excreted and uh, as the GFR declines, they continue to remain in the circulation longer, worsening the risk of hypoglycemia. And hypoglycemia is everyone's nightmare, every physician's nightmare. You certainly don't want to get your patients into hypoglycemia. So in stage 3 and stage 4 kidney disease, glycolyzide and glyphosate have been shown to be efficacious, have been shown to be safe, have been shown to be well tolerated, and they are cheap and they are easily available. So despite the available of this availability of these newer drugs, I think there's no drug that can beat these two drugs. You could use either one of them, and uh, they have got minimal risk of hypoglycemia. They have, there are international recommendations to suggest that they can be safely used in stage three, stage four chronic kidney disease. If a patient is in stage five kidney disease, that the EGFR is less than 15, that's the time when we would be avoiding sulfonyl ureas, or if you want to use, use it very cautiously. So sulfonyl ureas, I think, um, remain the sheet anchor as far as the management of uh, diabetes in kidney disease is concerned. And they can be used safely from stage one, stage two, stage three, up to stage four. Definitely in stage three and stage four, we use short-acting sulfonyl ureas. And if we have to prevent diabetic kidney disease, we have to impress upon our patient to just do it. The Nike is at to just get your blood sugar under control. Obviously, you have to control the blood pressures also. And for controlling the blood sugars, I think uh, sulfonyl urea still, despite the availability of newer anti uh, diabetic drugs, retain their place. We could also use them in combination but uh, they are great drugs to use. Thank you. At the end, I'd like to express my thanks to Alembic uh, and Docmode for providing the scientific platform.